space there's a lot of good space inside them so now if you put water inside it a lot of water can be absorbed with these four spaces okay so as i said that even though the reservoir looks looks like a solid to the naked eye a microscope examination reveals that there are small pore spaces in between them we call them the pores the small openings this blue one here we call them this pores so porosity how we define it in an engineering way is the capability of the rock to hold fluids and pores and how we what the formula we have is pore volume over the bulk volume for example it is always defined in the percentage actually there is no unit of porosity the unit of porosity is percent expressed in percent so for example what is the pore volume pore volume is this volume of these pores okay and bulk volume is the bulk volume of all pore plus the grain and everything whatever inside it so this is the bulk volume so bulk volume represents all the volume and the pore volume represents the small pore volume that it has and we just divide them together we get the porosity porosity is actually expressed in percent and we say that it is ability of the rock to hold the fluids and as you say that now in this picture we have a matrix green particles this one green one and it has on the rock surface this green surface you see here we have some water sticking to it and then we have oil and gas as a moving mobile one okay now as i said the porosity we call it the bulk volume means bulk volume means starting from this point this point this point this bulk volume overall all the volume of it okay and uh, pore volume is the volume which is occupied by this one okay now the question is how do we obtain it this pore volume and bulk volume can we do it in the laboratory we have equipment porometer porosimeter you call it and uh, that calculates for us we put the rock sample inside it the nitro helium uh, gas goes inside those pore space and helium gas uh, amount of helium gas which goes inside these particles it tells us that how much actually the pore volume it has then we do our calculation so we have porosimeter actually the equipment that is used to find out the porosity bulk volume is easy to calculate bulk volume is actually just multiply x and y we easily get the bulk volume so pore volume includes the bulk volume minus the the matrix volume so you can also find out the matrix volume here and you minus the bulk volume you can get the pore density still the same theoretically as i said the porosity actually is from 0% to 47% the but as i said 20% 22% is the good we call it a good porosity okay and uh, in practice we have good reservoir in kurdistan has 20 to 25% of porosity here we have sandstone very high good porosity the us which is producing lot of shale sands the low very low porosity when i say low porosity mean 8% 9% 10% so it does not have lots of oil because it has low porosity but the it's in a long kilometer i mean long distance so what they do they do the fracturing to take the oil out of it any question for on porosity okay now we have two kinds of porosity original porosity induced one original porosity is the one uh, which is uh, done during the deposition of the rock material when the dinosaurs were you know uh, killed or they died at that time whatever erosion was happening the silt and sand was accumulating at that time when it was porosity was generated we call it an original porosity induced one because of you know some earthquake happens so some fractures can come so we call them the induced one because of the later on the changes happen in the interval usually the rock represents this original porosity this is what we are concerned with again the types of porosity these are the grain particles you see and it has side as some cementing material so porosity there is a lot of space in between them and they are quite connected now there are two concepts here effective porosity and ineffective porosity now what is effective porosity and what is ineffective porosity can anyone differentiate here in according to this picture can anyone tell me what is effective and ineffective what does it mean very obvious but still i want to the ask. space is between rocks yeah it is but 
what is the difference between effective porosity and ineffective porosity? Anyone can find out from this picture? Which is the high effective is higher. Anyone else? Well, I think it's related to the permeability of the. It is, but can okay. you explain more about it? It's very clear from the picture if you see. Well, the oil can actually come out easily, but uh, the ineffective porosity, the oil cannot, is stuck, yes. it cannot come out. Yes, yes, that's right. Anyone else? We have 20 participants. Anyone, please? Okay. Uh, the distance between the rock, I think. Uh, if you see in the ineffective porosity, it is blocked by all sides. If you notice from this picture, it is just blocked from all sides. It has no way to no way out. While the effective porosity is one, which one is all connected. If you see it here, if you see here, this the effective porosity. Effective porosity is the one you see. This one is all connected with each other. So we call it effective. And ineffective is the one which is the blocked. I mean, there is or there may be oil inside, but it is blocked. Probably it will not come to the surface because it's already blocked. It has no space to come out. So this is not effective for us. This is ineffective one because it's useless. We don't need it. What we are concerned with, the effective porosity. So for example, the total porosity of this rock is now 30%. But 5% of them, since it is blocked by all sides, we cannot, you know, it, it will not be helpful for the oil to come out of this. So it's ineffective. We are not really concerned with that. Thing. And it's not going to be helpful unless we fracture it, you know. So what we are concerned with the effective one, and effective one is the one which is the connected viscous or porosity. Here, you see here. Got the idea? Anyone? So now can anyone explain? Can anyone explain what is effective and ineffective one? I just... Uh, effective porosity is not trapped by the rock matrix. Then uh, ineffective porosity is trapped by the rock matrix. matrix. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly. Exactly. Very well defined. Anyone else has any different words? Okay. Now, factors that affect the porosity, yes. Doctor, sorry, I have a question. Yes. Um, do you have to have both uh, in the same rock? We do have both in the same rock. But as both I said, yes. But what we are looking for is effective porosity. Is there any technique you can use to get benefit of the ineffective porosity? Fracturing. We do the fracturing, right. we frack it. That's the way. This is ineffective one is all in shale reservoirs are ineffective porosity in US. It's very expensive, I guess. It's Hydraulic fracturing. Yeah, but they still do it and uh, that's how they get it. But US, that's why the price of US oil is bit higher than the one. That's why there was a price war. The Middle East was, was trying to in, uh, reduce the price so that US shale do not work. As you said, the fracturing is expensive. So what they were trying to do is to fill the oil by reducing the price so that they do not do the fracturing there. Because fracturing is a expensive job. If they reduce the price, let's say to $30 per barrel, they might not be able to do the fracturing. But instead what happens after, after some time, they reduce the price of fracturing also. So now even their break even value of, for example, if you look at the top shale reservoirs now, is around $25. In Iraq, our uh, production uh, cost is probably $7 to $8 per barrel. Here, the cost of production. But in US, the production is 20 to $25 from this US shale. And it is because they have lots of ineffective porosity and they are doing the fracking to take this oil out. Because it's trapped from all sides, they cannot take it out. It has no permeability. So they have to fracture it again and again. But still they are producing 1.12 million barrels per day. They are the champions right now. Yeah, so it's because of the hydraulic fracturing that if they are even ahead of Saudi Arabia. And a lot of work is going on this fracturing, as I said, in one of the previous laser fracking, electromagnetic fracturing, and so on. 
Now we talk about the factors that affect the porosity. Again, the size and shape of those cells. For example, if I look at look at this one, now we have the same container. Look at the picture one and look at the picture two. Here the size is a bit higher. Okay, bit bigger, the green size. Now my question is which one, this picture, this gray one or the blue, which one has the higher porosity? Anyone please? As I believe that the gray one, one? Yeah, the gray one has higher porosity because the green volume is bigger. It has larger green particles. So the poi that's why if the green size is bigger, the pore is also bigger. It has big space. Here it has small space. So that's why. This is one of the green size impact the porosity. The other side is the shape of the green side. Look at this one. In this one, the porosity is 36%. And because of the cementing, this become ineffective. You see here, it's useless for us. So all we have is this one. And this cement also took place. So now the porous reduced from 36% to 20%. So the grain size, grain shape also matter. For example, in this case, we have big one, big grain size, we have small grain size and further small grain size. So because of the difference in those grain size, the porosity definitely matters. What we look for in the end, is the effective porosity, how much porosity we have. And we have porosity meter, we just use that one. And rock sample, we take it during the drilling. During drilling, we have the real rock sample. We send it to the laboratory, and the laboratory tells us that uh, using the porosity meter, how much porosity we have. Now we talk about the, any question from porosity? Okay. Simply you can define porosity measurement of white spaces or small spaces that inside rock heads. Definitely we cannot see with the naked eye. We have to use the microscopic investigation to find out those pores because they are so small. The other thing is the permeability. Now porosity only is not enough 